So for our plumbing, instead of using something traditional like copper, we're using PEX. Now what the heck is PEX? It is plastic tubing, but meant for water in your house. It is incredibly cheaper than copper. So it's pretty easy to use. Uh, it comes in all sorts of different sizes, colors. This is our three quarter inch PEX. We're running a one inch main in this house, one inch to the water heaters. We're running three quarter inch line to go to all of the fixtures. At the fixtures, it's going to be reduced to half inch, which we have some half inch right here. Red for hot, blue for cold, obviously. But yeah, PEX is just plastic tubing that is incredibly easy and incredibly cheap to use. Like I said, it's easy to use. To cut it, like butter. Once you cut it to length, you take your pinch clamp, that's this guy. This is how we're gonna fasten it. Slide it on the end of the tubing. You take your fitting, in this case it's just a three quarter inch elbow. Slide it into the tubing. Last step, you take your crimp tool, slide it in there, pull the trigger. See that green indicator? That means that it fully cycled and it works right. And as you see that crimp, oh, it's beautiful. Cheap, strong, easy to use. Let's go plumb a house. So as we mentioned, one inch main, and this is it. That's over in the master bedroom. Hey, can you go make sure that's not tangled in there? Yeah, let's check. <laughs> You're good. So here's the picture. We got our water main coming in. We got our first fixture running down. And down there we have our hot and cold. That T keeps that hot water, sorry, keeps that main water, that one inch line, moving down the house. Later we're gonna add another T to send it this way so that it can drop for the washer and dryer and the other water heater down further. And finally, uh, this is going to a hot water heater in the attic. So a three quarter inch line will come back and be paired with this three quarter inch line so that we do in fact have hot and cold as you see down there. Again, back to our main and boom. This will then get nailed to the stud and this will get ran out where it needs to go. So right now we're in the laundry room uh, for reference, master bedroom there, garage there. And in this laundry room, we need a washer and dryer, and that washer requires some water. So we have our water going in top, and this bottom will be the drain from the washer. That drain will go right down into there, but you're gonna have a P trap and a vent, other stuff. So we're gonna run our three quarter inch down through, well, more holes in there, down through there to there. And then that three quarter will get reduced to half inch. Uh, we just have a bunch of three quarter inch lines, so we're doing all the runs down a three quarter inch. The bottom, it'll be reduced to half, and out comes the water. Bingo. So I'm going to cut short little pieces for the ends of these where they get reduced. And again, this colored line is half inch. Connections are complete for the half inch side. We got our water lines roughed in. You can see this one for the little Toilet right there. Uh, we need to tie in at the top, that's all right. Same with these two for the washer. Look at that, beautiful. Uh, we need to tie in and we're not fastened here because that stud needs to go. Carrying on from last night, we're bringing this main all the way down to the hot water heater that's going over there. Again, one of the tough parts about this build is the fact that the current house is still being lived in. And for plumbing, that means we still have water hooked up. Uh, obviously all the old toilets and sinks, uh, the kitchen. So right now we are all hooked up just about uh, leading up to the fixtures. We don't have the fixtures hooked up obviously, but all the lines 
are in place, we need to connect our hot water heater and again, all the fixtures. So right now we have everything capped off that was open uh, and we just shut off the water main to the house. Now we are going to tie in our new plumbing with the water main so that we have new water and all the old stuff is back working. So here's our one inch water coming in from the main. Well, this is the main. And here's our contraption to hook it up to our one inch line going to the house. We have a simple quarter turn valve and a regulator. And then all converts to PEX. Also unions in there. In case we have a problem with the regulator, we just shut off the water, pull the reg out. This video is not sponsored, but we are big, big fans of Christie's Red Hot Blue Glue. You sure is a fan of the smell. That was high when I plumbed that. Boom. And because this is a union up top, it allows us to swivel it to any location to tighten it. So we have this regulator at an angle like that, so it will fit behind the door that is blocking it, but it's also able to be accessed And while we've shown you how we're getting water into the house, there's a whole separate side of this, which is getting water out of the house. So here's one of our drains. This is for the washer. Uh, it's the bottom of this box that'll be hooked up to the washer later. Water is going to flow down and through to the underground, which is then sent off to the sewage. We have a septic system uh, at our property. This is called a P-trap, super simple. Water flows down and has to get to a certain level to flow up and over. When it runs out, it leaves water about this high, which means this, basically this entire piece is filled with water, which means that when you have gas that might vent up from the sewage, it will not go into your system. It will be blocked off by this water in the P-trap. Instead, it will vent upwards through this piping which then goes to the second story, which goes up to the roof, which then vents to atmosphere, leaving you without smelling Hey, we're on the street. About to turn on the water main. There she is. As you saw, the water main is on, on the street. So we have pressure down here, but we have this valve that is keeping it from entering the house until now. Whew. All right, let's go look at the mess. Oh, oh the hose is on. <laughs> Our hose was tied in, oops. Uh, no water there. No water here. I think we're good. Amazing. And just so you know, we're not faking it. There's water. Second story. Our last ones, no leaks. Freaking beautiful. We're in the second story, so those vent pipes come up through that hole eventually, and then through that hole in the roof to vent out to the atmosphere. And here you can see the vent lines. This is where they come together and then poke through that hole that we mentioned in the roof. Here is our instant hot water heater and the lines going to and from it. So it is the eve of our frame inspection. Now frame inspection involves structural, obviously the frame, uh, rough HVAC, rough plumbing, and rough electrical. And part of that rough plumbing inspection is to put everything under test. What that means is capping off all of our pipes and filling up the entire system with water all the way up to the roof. In our case, that's about 22 feet. And if you do the math, that works out to about 10 PSI of pressure down here. So in order to do that, we're gonna start with capping everything off. Easiest way to cap this off is with a test plug. You just glue this guy in place. And the cool thing about this is once you're done, pull this tab out. And then at that point, you could just run a fitting right over your pipe. So 
So we're going to do that to all of our pipes so that there's no leaks, obviously. And then once that's dry, we're going to fill the whole thing up and hopefully she, uh, she stays sealed up. So our system performed well under test. No leaks or anything, so we're good to go. And we are post inspection. Yeah, we're done with plumbing. Rough plumbing, that is. So we're going to keep moving forward and come back to the final plumbing stuff. You know, your toilets and showers and sinks and all that good stuff. Uh, once we get there, there's a lot that's going to happen between now and then. But yeah, rough plumbing is done and out of the way. Thank goodness.